for an adult audience. For an adult audience. Bloodline may contain sexually oriented content. With sexually oriented content. Listener discretion is advised. Discretion is advised. Listener discretion is advised. This is Loveline. 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 With Adam Carolla and Dr. Drew. Hey, everybody. It's Loveline. I'm Adam. That's Dr. Drew. It's the best of the best of the best of Loveline. Who do we have on tonight's show, Drew? Coldplay, Snoop. Oh, wow. Snoop. The famous Jimmy Kimmel, as you Ooh. love her. Oh, yes. Just Jimmy, Jimmy Kimmel. Kimmel. Yes, your male lover. Wow. Your life partner, excuse you. Uh, Eminem, Jim Belushi. Wow. Yeah, big show. It's best nice. of the best. I belched up a little garlic. <laughs> yeah, it's just, 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 uh, just uh, Jimmy's name yeah. comes up and gas begins. That's right. Head. That's right. That's right. Come out of my eyes if it has to. All right. So let's get started with a band that I really enjoyed. And these guys are good and they're from England and nice they're not guys. snobs. No, they're nice good guys. Guy. And I had to explain to them, I think, uh, about some of our uh, customs from our friends <laughs> south of the border. So enjoy a little cold play. Hey everybody, it's Loveline. I'm Adam, that's Drew. Jonathan and Chris are both in here tonight from Coldplay. The uh, new album, A Rush of Blood to the Head, Stop is coming out. Me, no, it's good. It's getting boring. Now. It's good. And don't you guys play any weekend gigs? No, because we work in the week. Yeah, i got to work this out. We played yesterday, though. That was a weekend. Yeah. Yeah. It was? That we was... always work, man. Well, yesterday was Monday, wasn't it? What day is it, Drew? All right, John... Yeah. You're 18? Hey, what's going on? What's up? Nothing much. Uh, first, I just want to say uh, to the guys in Coldplay, I love the guitar sound you guys got in your albums, man, especially on your new single. I think it's really great. Thanks a lot, Thank man. You. Thanks. Um, anyway, uh, Drew, I've been using uh, this cream that I bought uh, in this adult store, kind of as a joke at first, mm. but uh, it numbs the, the penis, you know what I mean? Right. So when, you know, you're having sex, you can last longer. It's called, like, delay cream. Does it work? Yeah, it does. It's hard for me to believe that, but but maybe what, maybe it's a placebo effect. Maybe what, what's it in works, it? Oh it works. no, it works. What's in it? Uh, I can't I can't tell you the active ingredient, but I know it's water based. It doesn't list the ingredients. On it here. doesn't list the ingredients. Ooh. It's probably a xylocaine gel of some type. Okay. Well, uh, is that legal? I mean, yeah. you can buy xylocaine. I mean, it's like stuff you'd put on your tooth. Yeah, I mean there there are topical creams you can use now that numb skin up, but. It, this, it's not. Um, what, what the reason I have sort of doubts about it mm-hmm. is that it's not just the skin that's stimulated during sex. But all he he's looking for an edge. Yeah, no, no, you right. know what I mean. He's looking for all an right. extra few minutes. All right, three right, or well, four anyway, extra my, pumps. My friend was telling me that it's probably not a good idea since I'm only eighteen, or that it may even like stunt my my penis. Or, I don't know. Whatever. Stunt penis. Uh, no, your penis is, was done growing three years ago. I got bad news for <laughs> well, you. Twenty one is actually when guys finish, but. Uh, listen, but, my penis did not make a move between 18 and 21. I understand. John's done. Okay, be, be that as it may. Uh, uh, unless I know what's in the cream, I can't really tell you whether right. that's good. It's well, what if he eats the cream? Wouldn't that work that much better? No, I don't think so. And, and what about the cream? Is, uh, is it safe to like use with condoms? We said it was water-based, so yeah. Right. All right. Are you using it with a condom? Yes. Well, maybe, also, maybe the, it would numb the girl, so I guess I would, you know. But maybe the condom is why you're having the, the uh, delay. I, were you honestly, not, were you when not, I when I like you know go in there like I can't I honestly can't feel it. Were you I not? Doesn't that it. take away the enjoyment though? Well, yeah, I know, but <laughs> Chris I'm makes a valid point. Pleasuring her too, you know. Yeah, and John's John's take on it is so so yeah, so wise. And then and then <laughs> he, I like this guy. And then what if John uses the numbing cream? The chick decides to give him a BJ instead, and then she walks around all day like she went to the dentist. Yeah. You know, I mean, really? she can't, she's like, oh, hey, that'll be $50. Were you, were you not, John, were you not using a condom before you used this cream? No, I've, uh, every, well, I've never had sex without a condom anyway, so. Good for you, man. That's thanks to your show, but I'm not sure, good, I'm not sure if you answered the question, though. Oh, I'm sorry. It is, since using the cream, uh-huh. did you start using a condom, or have you always been using the cream with the condom? No, 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 I... No, I've been. I just started using the cream. So, so. you always been using the condom, and you added the cream, and it's helped. Oh, yeah. All right. Okay. But uh, hey, Adam, real quick. Yeah. Uh, I just wanted to say that uh, I've been a fan of the show since like I've been in sixth grade. I just graduated high school. Oh man. <laughs> and I'm actually leaving for Georgetown University in like three days. Cool. So 
so you don't always have stupid callers. And right. I promise you, once I get into like a position of political power, I will fight for you guys and make sure that the morning after pill comes with every condom. God Thank bless you. you. John, I was just at Georgetown a couple weeks ago. We, we're on in Washington, D.C. So oh, really? Oh, great. There, yeah. great. I'd, I'd also like you to work on the time differential between us and uh, the East Coast. When, when, he's in power. In charge. when he's in power, yeah. I'll what? be working for you, Adam. I yeah. So it gets dark at noon. John could be one of your staffers. <laughs> Yeah. you perfect. Yeah. yeah, you could rub some of that cream on my staff. <laughs> Thanks, What's, John. What song is he listening to in the background? I, I think he was listening to, like, like uh, Mar Mariah Carey I or something. I thought it was Crow. John? I thought John? Yeah. Clown Pussy. Love playing. What's the song playing in the background? Oh, no, my dad's a musician. He's recording an album below us. He has a studio in our house. So. It, it's not Bob Dylan, is it? I'm sorry? Who is it? Who is your father? Uh, I can tell you off air, but not not on the air. Why is it someone you, someone we know? No, not really. If you let me come down to the studio, I'll tell you. Michael Bolton. <laughs> <laughs> now, what's she doing? Is she covering a song down there? Is that original? No, it's original. Nice. Yeah. Oh, cool. You got a dad who's got a studio. He's a musician. You probably still hate him, right? No, no. I love my dad. Okay, good. He's going off to Georgetown. All right. Good night, buddy. I'm jealous. Thanks. All right. He's got a penis that works. <laughs> found a. Found some cream for it. And it of the, some of these people who are ringing in with problems don't really seem to have problems. That's right. That's more an endorsement. He, for they're just showing off some of the numbing them. cream. It was, a, it was a great endorsement. It's like, hey, I'm in a woman. I don't even know it. <laughs> <laughs> hey, that's great. I can't feel anything. Yeah, hey, you take a few quaaludes, you can pass out. <laughs> <laughs> Someone can rape you. It's great. Yeah. You needn't even know you were there. Right. Yeah. You, you rub some of that on your face. You don't know you're going down on a woman. It's great. It's great stuff, Drew. Jeff? Hello. You're 31? Yeah. What's up? Hey, um, question for everybody, but mainly Dr. Drew. I am a recovering drug addict alcoholic. I uh, My sobriety date's June 14th of 1993, and uh, I have ADD. So does pretty much every addict. Yeah. Uh, that, that's part of having addiction. That those genes overlap, and the problem is when you have ADD and addiction, the treatment have to be different. Okay. Have to be different. Why? The, because mostly the people will be advocating the use of stimulants, and addicts absolutely categorically under no circumstances should be exposed to stimulants. So, like, if you have ADD, they give you Ritalin, right? Or something like that. But, yeah. if, but if you're an addict, they shouldn't give you that Ritalin. Not after the age of 18. In fact, before the age of 18, they can, and it works quite well. But if something happens during the development of the brain that makes it really quite different after 18. What's ADD? Attention Deficit Disorder. Oh, okay. So, Jeff? Yeah. So now the question is what? Well, basically, I was prescribed Adderall. Which yeah, is that's a no-no really. no for you. Because yeah. it's speed? It's a speed lag. It's not as bad and doesn't trigger an addiction immediately, but it will, it will kindle your disease. Your disease will resurface biologically f by the stimulation caused by that drug. That's you can, exactly Jeff, what can I have your Adderall? <laughs> so I mean, what are you going to do? Give it to one of your goofball friends or have it expire in your medicine cabinet? Why don't you send it over here? Did you relapse? I, yeah, I did. I gave it to my wife. Basically, yeah. I abused the Adderall. I double dosed. Yeah. I felt guilty. Gave it to my wife, and we flushed it. But I could have made. Oh, See, so that you, breaks you, my heart. You really when should. Flush uh, drugs. Unfortunately, I, I'm sure you, you, it'd be worth your while to take a new sobriety date and you know take a newcomer check. Oh yeah. no. Yeah. You got prescribed so a little something, and now you got to. Reset the sobriety clock. Nothing to be ashamed of. It's just his biology has been re-triggered. He has know, to pick a new date, though. I mean, he's he's got like nine years under his yeah, belt. You know, it's it, uh, it's a rigorous program of honesty. And if you're really gonna be truly honest, uh, yeah, I don't know. Right. I don't. That doesn't count. It doesn't count. But it, to be completely honest, that's the way you should do it. But listen, a lot of this happens, and you know, always be careful of well-meaning uh, caretakers. Wellbutrin's okay. Um, clonidine's okay. Certain other antidepressants would be okay, but not the stimulants. Okay, I'm on a Fexor right now. So That's is fine. Just, is there anything else that you would recommend? Well, you know, again, like well, Wellbutrin and, well, butrin and clon oh, in terms of getting off the speed? Well, that or just, I mean, what can I do to take care of myself besides getting enough rest, eating right, having a schedule, any other kind of medication? You're talking for about uh, dealing with your ADD? For the ADD, yeah. Uh, I would, serious, if you're having a lot of symptoms... You need to see a psychiatrist who's used to dealing with addicts so you don't get biologically off track. And it may be time, nine years, ten years, those can be tough years for people in recovery. Maybe it's time to get a therapist and really see what psychologically might be sort of uh, boiling up right well, now. What about NyQuil? Are you allowed to do NyQuil? Alcohol. Sorry, Adam. Is, is it just no me? No way or is it, am I doing that. Is there a lot more problem with 
I don't know, John, like depression and, and but people having prescription tablets over here than we have. Probably. You guys have I mean, grown, I've never heard of any of these drugs ever. You guys have grown accustomed to your depression. It's part of life. Here we won't accept it. No, but seriously, is it is it is it does it do you not think it's gone a bit crazy? I, I, I you know, I think like uh like anything, there's an abuse side and an over prescribed side. And, you know, from what I've learned from sitting here for a number of years, the, the, the drugs do work in, in many applications, but there's always some case of it, them being prescribed where they shouldn't be prescribed, and then that sort of leads to a discussion, and then people want to get away from them. I, I guess if you just stood back and looked at them, overall, they do more good than harm. Would you say that, Drew? Overall. So if it's if it's 75% good and 25% bad, then I guess... It's that way with um, explosives. <laughs> it's that way with cars. You, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Someone, some could argue it's that way sure. with guns or, or buildup of uh, you know uh, military. But, I mean, we, it's we that are, way with everything that works. Uh, uh, we we need relief and gratification, and l now that's sort of our sure. culture. I'm not having a go. I'm just. It's just. In, uh, it's just because I'd never heard of them. Yeah, I think uh, I don't know, Drew. Do you do you, uh, you, you have those meetings? Do they figure out what's going on around the world with these things? I mean, we got to be the world leader in this stuff, right? You know, I've never been at a meeting that discussed that. Uh -uh. But in, yeah, I wonder who's second. I mean, we know the United States is number one, and probably by a long shot. I mean, by by a wide margin. But you think England's number two? I don't know. Canada? I don't know. Mexico sounds pretty good. Mexico, you get whatever you want. At the at the corner, yeah. it's great. Go get quaaludes, tequila. Just go get anything over there. I like that society. It's like it's one big. It's like one. It's a country that's like continuously throwing a bachelor party. <laughs> it, it really is. That's true. My my best friend met the uh, buffalo cheerleaders there. In in Mexico. In Mexico, yeah. yeah. And he had and he certainly had a bachelor party. <laughs> yeah, it's great. It's 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 one big party over there. I mean, I guess you guys. Uh, you guys got the red light district over there in Europe somewhere. Where is that true? Amsterdam. Amsterdam. You guys got your Amsterdam. But Strangely, it's, it's no Mexico because you can't get tile. Right. We can get tile and pinatas. What is that? What's mean? that? You guys know what pinatas are? Is it a type of taco? Oh, <laughs> yeah. No, 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 see, no. this is the problem with England. You guys need pinatas. I'm going to go out there and open a pinata. What is factory. Pinata? Johnny, you know that. No, Lava lamps no, and pinatas. <laughs> pinata is uh, it's it's a uh, paper mache. Or as you would say, papier paper mache. mache. No, papier mache. Papier. Yeah, yeah, that's a good one. That uh, al aluminum and paper mache are the two ones these guys go nuts on. <laughs> <laughs> say aluminum. Aluminium. Aluminium. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. No. Yeah, yeah. Yes. Turn it. It's it's a whole new word for them. Uh, and and uh, yeah, paper mache is not even paper mache. It's pa papier. papier. It's French. Papier, papier mache. mache. Papier that's mache. what it is. Right. Fellas. Yeah, yeah, it is that. I know, I know. We, but we, it's like, yeah. you know and, what it and is? The, and the town where they have that tower is Paris. <laughs> we, we, <laughs> like Paris. We, we, you, know, we, you know what America is like? It's like, you know when a band covers a song and then the song gets bigger than the original? And then everyone thinks this, sure, the yeah, song yeah, was yeah, done yeah. better. That's and what's happened with aluminium. That's what happened with aluminium. We covered it as Americans, <laughs> and now it's ours. Fair enough. <laughs> but I used uh, to think it was Arkansas, and then someone told me it was Arkansas. So we're guilty of it as well. Oh, <laughs> well, no, that's a new one well, for me. Well, Missouri and Missouri. All right, well, let's get, back to, let's get back to the pinata discussion. What is a pinata? This is a pep. Pepe mache <laughs> donkey. You guys don't have donkeys over well, there either. No, we, we, yeah, we do. We have donkeys. You, you guys got donkeys now. Yeah, yeah. Oh, <laughs> your things are really looking up over there. <laughs> but, but they have a hull. There's an empty, there's an empty shell within this papier mache. Right. So it's, it's a and vessel. It, it doesn't have to be a donkey. Traditionally, it's 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 a burrow. But it, it's, it's, it or it's be, an animal with four legs. Yeah. Right. But Big it really could be ET's head, whatever your kid right. likes, you know. <laughs> and it's spaceship. hollow, and we fill it with candy. Oh, All right, yeah. and yeah. then Typical. and then no, we no, no. blind, then we hang it from oh, a tree. Oh, and you hit it with a stick. Yes. And we yeah. blindfold kids and we spin them around. Everything and you do over here, you hit something with a stick. Yeah, it's very simple entertainment. Yeah, I know, I know. It seems like, hey, if you want candy and you have fifteen <laughs> kids, how about just giving them some goddamn candy they have to beat the crap out of ET's head, and then I'll dive on it like it's a rugby pile. <laughs> and we got to turn everything into a competition in this country. Oh, absolutely, a fight. Yeah. Me Mexico, uh, I think Mexico invented that, but I think they just invented that to sell it to us because they know we like sticks and beating up stuff and, and tearing stuff up. We go open. for that, though. We go for that. 
Yeah, it's always great. You know, the good thing about the uh, the the uh, what, the paper the papier mache uh, papier mache. Uh, yeah, right. The good thing <laughs> good thing about the pinata is 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 there's always one overzealous kid who jumps in a little early before the kid's taking the blindfold off and just catches the tail end of the last swing across the forehead. <laughs> we have a big problem with that in this country. Yeah. <laughs> well, big problem. Is there must be some sort of like abbreviation of it, like pinata disorder or something. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Do you Drew, ever get callers about that? Drew's seeing it's, more it's, and more of it. Cu- cuda pinata. <laughs> cuda pinata. <laughs> yeah. Is this a syndrome? Yeah, it's right across the forehead. Yeah. CPS. <laughs> yeah. Through. Most of your CAT scan victims are, oh, are Pinata, people yeah. come through there for that, right? Mm-hmm. Derek? Yeah, hello? You're 16? Yeah. Yeah. Hey, hey Adam. Hey. You're just a hilarious guy. And Great. Hey, Dr. Drew, mm-hmm. what can I say? You're a passionate man. Whatever. All right, what's up there, Derek? Oh, uh, I want to talk to Coldplay. Here they Chris, are. Hey, John. See, that's hello. who he really wants to speak to. <laughs> How's it going, man? Good. Um... Chris, I guess you said that this could be your last um, album coming up. Yeah. And uh, what, 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 I guess, why? That's a great question. Well, the, the thing is, and I don't want to sound all cheesy, but this is the kind of show where I, you can say things like this, but it's because uh, we suddenly started to really appreciate um, what we get to do in our lives, and we didn't want to start thinking too far ahead, and we just want to sort of enjoy everything for the moment. I know this, it sounds a bit sort of well, what do you mean science. appreciate what well, you Well, I mean, as in, sometimes we went through a period when we first started having some success where we would just uh, let it all pass us by and, and we, we just wanted to make a sort of conscious effort to put all our effort into what we were doing now and... Uh, Not look down the road. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you know, and to make the best record now and so, so we didn't hold any songs back and we, you know, we haven't sort of... I don't know. Johnny's better at explaining. We, we got, you know, we got nothing planned for anything yeah. in the future. You know, everything's open. Taking things one day at a time. It's our way of saying that this is the best possible record we could have made. It's, it's our. That's, I. Right. We haven't sort of saved six songs for our. It, it's mm. it's a good it's a good message because I, I think we <coughs> all we're all guilty of this, which is you, you, everyone's looking down the road. What about next year or next season or next album, next show, next contract, yeah. next whatever. And you, you end up living your life to whatever the next landmark is, and then you get to that landmark, and ironically, you're looking ahead yeah. to whatever's ahead of that, and you're just saying, this is what we're doing no, now. And we still do that, but, but, but I mean, also, also the, the, the simple fact of it was, when I said that, was just after we'd finished uh, making the record, and, and, and um, we sort of paint the parallel with childbirth in that you know once when you've given birth to a child right i'm sure most mothers straight away would not be that keen to have another baby right but yet yet they have five kids and and, and and (laughs) and so we that's this country though right they have two and a half in england when when we said that it was right after we'd finished and you know the idea of making another record was terrible hey derek yeah yeah but you know i ironically this this uh, approach or mindset may give you more longevity than I hope so than people who are constantly talking about what's down the road Derek is that a satisfactory answer for you oh yeah after waiting All 100 right. minutes on hold you're on hold for 100 minutes was he about yeah Derek oh, we salute you anything and to take talk cool play thanks Derek oh, thanks a lot man. Thanks, man take care bye take care of yourself see you've got some great people in your country yeah Not really. I don't think you should that was, the, that was the one guy yeah yeah they're all just Jane Doe to me <laughs> I don't really recognize him as You have no right. compassion anymore. We have some good calls coming They're up. Jane though. Doe and Joe Bloggs. Those are uh, those are the callers. You see how much I know about England? Yeah. I know the and, Joe Bloggs. And Fagel. And I know the paper mache. Fagel. Fagel. <laughs> the papier mache <laughs> and the uh, aluminium. We're going to have to straighten that out. That's going to be one of my things. When I go to England, I'm going to try to get, I'm gonna try to get aluminum. Uh, through, but you're going over there with a lot of you know you don't want to annoy too many people you're going over there with time issues and <laughs> <laughs> no I, I, I have a very a very, a very busy agenda over yeah, there just you know make some friends first do you, All right. you spell it differently yeah, yeah they, spell it, they spell, we it spell it differently we spell it correctly yeah they Not invented amazing. it we screwed it up it's like color I've done some research into this Drew they, they, they invented it and uh, they uh we screwed it up. All right. That's ours. That's usually what we do. Right. Yeah. I'm going over there. And I got to talk to you guys during the break because you know what I want to do? I want to go to, when I'm in England, I want to go look at, I want to go to some like car factories and stuff. You guys got, you guys got like Aston Not Martin many left. Or, or Rolls Royce or anything? Bentley. Oh.
All right. Got, I think we, we got... What have we... Oh, They're like all in it. Tokyo. All right. Well, I'm going to Chris's flat. I'm going to crash there and kill some ants. Yeah, too. Yeah. Steal a few gold records and uh, we haven't got our way anything. back. We'll be right back. Well, what do you know? It's the best of the best of Loveline. I'm Adam. That's Dr. Drew. And let's keep this train a rolling. What do you say, oh, Drew? We're really, it's really cooking now. Yeah. We're uh, now coming into one of our favorite, most consistent guests, Mr. Uh, Snoop Dogg in yesterday. He was uh, 115 days off pot. And you'll notice he's a little livelier Snoop than usual. Yeah. And, and uh, let's paint the picture, though. It, don't, it wasn't not the case that night that the bishop was sitting in the corner with his diamond-encrusted cane. Bishop and, Don Magic Wand. And his chartreuse bowler and... Yes. Suit. Yeah. He well, here's what I learned from Bishop Don Magic Juan. Uh, green is for the money and gold <laughs> is for the honey. And that's one of those things. See, when you're a black guy, there's two things you can do. One is you wear any hat you want. No one ever says anything. You can two, rhyme. you can talk about that. You can rhyme ridiculous rhymes and no one goes, what are you talking about? <laughs> Everyone just goes, that's right. That's no, cool. he's right. Yeah. He's right. Look at the crazy hat. The guy with the crazy hat who's rhyming, he's right. And you get to use a cane, even if your leg's not bad, and it can be encrusted with jewels. Uh -huh. Yes. All right. So, everyone, please enjoy a little Snoop Dogg. Hey, everybody. Love line. I'm uh, Adam Carolla. That is Dr. Drew. Phone number 1-800-LOVE-191. Dr. Drew, that almost sounded like Dr. Dre. Dr. Drew. That's why he called himself Dr. Drew. That is. Right, piggybacking on that. Yeah. Snoop Doggy Doggy Dr. Drew was at your dough. <laughs> <laughs> Yep, Anderson's going to reach for the tape. Yeah. Of course. He, he just immediately reached for the tape. We'll get some mileage out of that. Oh, he, wasn't, he wasn't taping that? Yeah. No, he was taping All it. Right, cool. He's got we it. got it live on the system, you did. Snoop, uh, well, let's see. I've not seen since I was at the uh, Bishop Don Juan's house. Yeah, the honeycomb yeah. hideout. That's what we call it. Thank you, sweetheart. I appreciate that, love. One of the... Uh, one of the uh, bigger bigger name pimps in, in town. Not, not <laughs> as big as Snoop Dogg, of course, but... Bishop Don Juan, quite a uh, dichotomy. He lives in a crappy two-bedroom apartment, but has a Rolls Royce parked out front. <laughs> He's a man who has his priorities. He hard on my homie. That's cool. Oh, yeah. no, I love him. He, he showed us how to dress, showed me uh, the proper way to hold a gold chalice and uh, drink champagne. It's, it's quite a day. <laughs> Put his shoes on. He, uh, Drew, I've showed you that video. No, I never saw oh, that it was one. great, no. great man. Yeah, I saw well, you I and Jimmy getting high with Snoop. Or oh, oh, I don't remember that. But you know what was funny? <laughs> then we got high again. And uh, and then I got high. We were standing out front of uh, of Bishop Don Juan's apartment, and uh, Snoop, Snoop was inside. And we had to wait for uh, the bishop to come on down and fire up the rolls before we <laughs> rolled with him, which took about two hours. But luckily, an ice cream truck came by. And, and you know, we were stoned. And, you know, Jimmy, when he gets stoned, he goes nuts, you know. And I convinced Jimmy that he was just putting the finishing touches on his ABC deal. And I said, Jimmy, they, the, the deal is not complete unless they throw in the Snoop DeVille, which is, uh, which yeah. is Snoop's. Cadillac, which Custom. I don't, I don't know if it's come out yet. It is out. Um, I've not actually, seen a lot of them on the road. No, nah, because you know Cadillac acting like they don't want to do it now, but what? it's all to the good. Yeah, so I'm probably gonna do it myself. So I'm gonna leave y'all number that y'all can hit me at if y'all want y'all personalized Snoop Deville's, you know, through my system. You dig in a real way. Well, I think I think Snoop or uh, one of uh, one of the posse members pulled up in what was like a prototype Snoop DeVille, huh. right? <laughs> yeah, it was. Is it Escalade or Escalator? No, no. it's a car. It's, it's the... Uh, it's DTS. The DTS. DTS. Yeah. Oh, nice. Right, right. And it's, uh, it's nice. It's got uh, some oh, you fur like it? in it and some leather. Oh, and yeah. uh, it, Diamond in the back, sunroof top. Ah. Yeah, it's really... It was nice. I, I could see you driving that, by the way. True? Yeah, you get a lot of girls, baby. little gold anodizing where it counts. <laughs> anyway... Uh, Jimmy was so stoned that I had him absolutely convinced that he was going to tell ABC <laughs> that they needed to throw a car in on the deal because that's a power move. That's the kind yeah. of move Snoop would do. He'd yeah, say, positioning. He'd say, I need the cash, I need the contract, I need this, I need that. But you got to throw in something. Yeah, something to, something to make me feel like the deal is worth doing. Right, right. So, so Caddy has backed off the Snoop DeVille. Yeah, they backed off, so maybe Chrysler, GM, or somebody like that would get involved. You never know. Yeah. I think uh, GM makes Cadillac, though, which is probably... 
<laughs> Might want to jump over Cadillac's head. You know what I'm saying? Oh, I see. Boss. Right. You know, That's right. Boss. Instead of talking to the underboss, I go talk to the real boss. That's right. All right. I don't want to... Oh, Snoop, by the way, is uh, coming out to do some phone calls uh, in Vegas with yeah. us uh, this weekend. So we'll all be out there. And uh, Drew's going to be out there, too. So, Fascinating. Uh, yeah, maybe we'll, uh, we'll uh, roll with you Snoop. You on that show, too? <laughs> That's my show, yeah. It is? Yes. That's a great show, man. You like that show? I love it. I let my kids watch it too. It's fly. We're gonna make a puppet out of you. You might as well, man. You know they counsel me off the Muppets because of Bill O'Reilly. Really? Uh-huh. Yeah, I did a segment with him, and then he started talking, and they took me off. So it's all cool. Well, yeah. wait a minute. Now, now I we were talking last night. We heard that you gave up weed. Is that yeah. true? Uh huh. How long has it been? About 115 days. Really, Drew. You want to do a urine test, or you believe it? It'd still be positive, so... Yeah, really? still, yeah you got to give me, what, 120 yeah, days? Yeah, something like that, yeah. Yeah, so I'm s- really? five or six days away. No <laughs> weed, nothing for 115 days. Yes, sir. That, not even a, 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 a roach? No, I just been walking resins. through, I've been walking through clouds of weed. You know, my homie still smokes, so I right. walk through the clouds. So you just stand up and you get high? No, I just, you know, walk to the other room. You and you just, you just quit cold turkey? There's yeah. no patch, no... No, none of that. No doctor, dirt, no patch, nothing? That. Jesus Christ. True, what do you think can, That is? can happen, right, Doc? It can happen, but you get pretty irritable and depressed when you stop, huh? He doesn't nah, seem but you that know, bad. You know, you know what I substituted it for? I substituted, sub, sub, I substituted it for my kids. I started spending time with Started smoking kids. your kids? Good. No, nah, I started <laughs> spending time with them. I wasn't spending time with them. I was always smoking weed instead of spending time with them. That's good. That's nice. That's a good thing, Doc. Yeah, eventually, the weed stops working for you, too, right? Yeah, it, it didn't get me high no That's more. right. And the, but the problem when you stop when you're at that point is you can, you can get really depressed for a few months afterwards, so watch out. Oh, it's a depression time? Yeah, and, for, you know, I have trouble remembering things and oh, okay. finishing stuff. But yeah. if, I'm a, if I'm busy, though, I'm, 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 like, stuck to the script right now. That's I got good. so many things to That's do. That's good. Right you're, you're, sort of, you're sort of maintaining. You're managing. Yeah, you. I'm, I'm maintaining. Yeah. I like that word. All right. All right, let's, uh, let's take some calls. Snoop Dogg here tonight. Nina? Yes. You're 24? Uh-huh. What's up? I have a question for you. Hi, you guys are all great. I love you so much, Adam. Great. Um, anyways, I have a question. When you masturbate in the bathtub and you switch the temperature, let me give you a little visual. When you straddle the nozzle yeah. and you, like, switch the... Oh, no, really baby. Hot. Yeah. <laughs> you switch the temperature. You make it really hot, yeah. All right. Yeah. Well, the hotter you get, can that, like, damage you? Can it, like, hurt you? Because that's, like, at the point where it, like, makes me come. I mean, you could burn yourself. <laughs> yeah, well, yeah. No. not, like, like, on the inside. That's what I'm asking. If, if it starts smelling like a clam bake, it's time nah, to turn... No, 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 no. It's time nah. to turn it down. You right, you can, right? Yeah, you can burn yourself, but that's all. Clam well, bake, there's no one. All right, all right. But, but listen, you would know it. I mean, it's like... It's like, how do you know if you're burning yourself when Anywhere you're standing else. next to a space heater? That's you right. don't you don't sit on it. You stand <laughs> next to it. Or if you were getting infections recurrently from this, you would know that you were sort of causing some irritation. But it doesn't sound like you are, huh? Okay. Yeah. Uh-huh. Are you are you high, baby? A little bit, not too much. Just uh-huh. a little. Uh-huh. Hey, it was just for Snoop. I know that's right. I appreciate that, baby girl. You need some real hey, meat in your you. life. You're playing with the little <laughs> water thing. <laughs> Yeah. Hey, you question. Kn- another question. For yeah. Since it took me so long to get to this, what side effects do like taking Xanax have? Side effects? Yeah, like is well, there side effects to like like if you take it for like a long period of time, you like- will you will start to have. It depends if you're an addict or not, but if you're prone to addiction, you'll start to sort of escalate. You'll start to feel like you need more. You'll start to have panic attacks in you know in between the intervals when you're taking the pills. Uh, you can still be forgetful. Sometimes it can make people depressed. But the biggest issue with Xanax is it can be profoundly addictive. Wow. All right. All right. All right. Good times, Adam. Yeah, hey, good times there, baby. <laughs> right. Snoop, you never got into any of that prescription stuff? No, I'm cool, man. You know, I mean, all I was into was weed, you know, gin and juice. Miller Genuine Draft, uh, Moet Champagne. You know, I stick to the script. I'm either on one thing or, you know, I can't I can't be fiddling around with, you know, things that take control over me and I don't have no control over it. What's the juice in gin and juice? It's orange juice, pineapple juice, uh, basically whatever kind of juice you like, you know what I'm saying? That's just, why it's just juice. Yeah, exactly. I know, but yeah. I, I want to know what Snoop's juice is. I thought you were ghetto. 
I, I'm down. I mean, you know, I just want to know what. Yeah, I hate you to the game. No trap. <laughs> yeah, I'd like to know the game. I hate you I know the. the game. I, I learned the pimping game. Yeah, from, you got uh, the. Many from, people want to know about this pimp game. <laughs> <laughs> from uh, Bishop Don Magic Wand, you know, but uh, now I got to learn the drinking game from yeah, Snoop. Right. That's all. all right. It's official. Dave? Hello? Yeah, Drew, you, later on you teach me the nerd game. Drew, <laughs> <laughs> are you good at that? Oh, how hey, dare hey, you? Hey, Dave, what's up? Dave. I'm going to say what's up to you, All right. Oh, no, He's sitting up here talking to somebody in, on the other line. That's Tracy? Right. Hello? You're 21? Yes. What's up? Hi. I just want to say that I'm a big fan of you guys. I love you guys to death. Thanks. You're welcome. Um, I wanted to ask you guys. Um, I've been with my ex-boyfriend for about, I've been, well, we've been screwing around for like a while now. Mm -hmm. And it's weird because it's like in the middle of sex, my vagina would just go automatically dry, and it would hurt like really, really, really bad. Yeah, your vagina's going. Why am I still with my ex boyfriend who doesn't care about me anymore? Why am I still having sex with this jerk? Well, yeah, that's your vagina saying that. Z that yeah. vagina has a mind of uh, its it own. Has a, it's a, actually a clearer thinker than you are. <laughs> <laughs> right. Well, yeah, sort of. Yeah. If you were with somebody you really cared about and you felt connected with them, that wouldn't happen. Yeah, you'd stay ultra wet. What 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 uh, minute are you on in the sex? I mean, you you guys going at it for an hour or? No, or actually, long? it's like probably like ten fifteen minutes into it. Pretty quick. Mm, it's yeah. weird. Ten fifteen. All right. And it, did it used to stay moist longer? It used to, yeah. So why are you having sex with an ex boyfriend? I don't know. All right, he's he's your ex. He's not into you. Well, Just because he's having no, he's only into you when he's into you. He's having sex. That does not mean he's into you. <laughs> well, when did he? When did he drop you? Did he dump you? I broke up with him. Why? Because he's an idiot. He what did he do? He was did with he another cheat? girl. Yeah. No, actually, he'd be um, he'd be one day he's like, oh baby, I miss you, I love you, blah blah, and the next day it's like, why am I with you? So I just got fed up with it and I just told him off. And just kept having sex with him. So he got exactly what he wanted. Wow. Hey, how about you dump me? <laughs> Snoop wants to be dumped too. <laughs> All right, Tracy. Well, look, Tracy's high too. Okay. Are, are you high, Me? Tracy? You smoke a lot of weed. Yeah. Yeah. Right. I could hear it. Drew you got can, to do it. Drew can hear the laugh. <laughs> 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 I also have another question. Yeah. What's yeah. Well, hold on a second. How come the brothers don't get the weed laugh? Only white guys get the weed laugh. Because yeah. the brothers know how to control that. You know what I'm saying? Is that what it is? Yeah. Weed to us is like. It's a friend of ours. It's, like mother's it's, not, it's not a drug, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. It's like a friend of ours. When, when we when we find weed, we find happiness. It's like we live in the hippie hippie era, you know? Uh -huh. yeah. Everything was fun and peaceful. Yeah. None but of them not. were drug addicts. No. No, but, I mean, I'm wondering, Drew. I mean, really, you never hear the weed laugh I don't in think, a black no, guy, no. only in white guys. No, yeah, that's right. What is that? I don't know. What is the weed laugh? I don't know what it is. I just hear it. But you don't hear that... <laughs> Yeah. You don't hear that. No. Snoop doesn't have that. No, of no. course not. No. Right. Never had voice. it, never will. 115 days, but uh, who's yeah. counting? Yeah, who's counting? Tracy, man? what's the other Tracy? question? Tracy? Could be less, could be more. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm guessing it's less. What's the other question, Tracy? Right, my other question is, um, how do you know that you're like allergic to like latex? You get, a, you get a itchy rash if you touch it. Really? Yeah. Because normally whenever I have sex with like um, condoms or anything. Yeah. Um, she gets like really, really red and really, really swollen. She like, gets. She meaning your vagina. Yeah. The one oh, with okay. the, the, one with the What's brain. What's her name? The one with the mind that's clearer than hers. Yeah. What's her name, baby? What's her name? Yeah. Violet. I know that's why. You named her Violet. Yeah. She's like a, it's like a ship. <laughs> I guess the vaginas are all girls. Ships are all girls. You know what I'm saying? It's wouldn't like it be she. The, wouldn't it be that. Okay. Yeah, the SS or the. Yeah. HMS. <laughs> hey, uh, hey, uh, yeah. Tracy? Yeah. All right, baby. Uh, find a new guy. Okay. I don't trust and this the, old guy. The, it's not necessarily a latex reaction you're describing. It could be yeast. It could be other infections. So it needs to be checked out. Let's talk to uh, Michael, who's uh, 19. Michael? Hey, what's what, up? What's up? Uh, main, main fan of the show. Um, what? Why is that? I'm a main fan of your show. Yeah. Uh, Adam, I think you're really cool. What kind of condition do you have? Um, I'm in a wheelchair. I have, a um, spinal muscular atrophy. 
Whoa. Spinal muscular a- do you, atrophy? We'll, we'll check. Do you know the other name for that? Uh, we're in the Austin. What is it? We're in the Austin. Hold on. We're in the Austin? Yeah. Uh-huh. What is it? Spinal muscular. We're in the Austin. I thought it was... Wizen and Offman? Yeah. I thought it was Kugelberg Wheelander Syndrome. No, I'm... Spot, uh, you're the more severe form. Yeah, and the more severe Spinal form. muscular atrophy is usually a Kugelberg Wheelander. Sure, the, guy, the guy's... Hold on a second. The guy's uh, operating his wheelchair with a crazy straw, and you're busting his chops I like a shepherd. I want to make Jeopardy. sure it wasn't somebody just goofing with us. Uh, all right. Okay, that's good. Doc, right. you that's understand good. that. Doc yeah. knows the terminology for that. Actually, I am the butt pad, but whatever. Okay. Right, you're, you're the real McCoy. Now, I'm the real McCoy. Are, are you in a wheelchair? Uh, right now I'm lying down. But, let but me, uh, let me normally ask. you're in a wheelchair. Yeah. Okay. My, my patients with spinal muscular atrophy, you can tell me if this happened to you too, felt that as their disease got worse, they, they had, their intelligence increased. Did that happen to you? Um, okay. Well, that was one, no. one of my patients reported that. I had really? a couple patients with this, yeah. I got more time to That's read. That's interesting. Um, no, I haven't. All right, okay. so are you are you uh, able to work or do anything like that? Um, I'm in college right now. In where? In college. College. Yeah. Okay. You doing? You you're you're calling from Berkeley. You going to you going to Berkeley? Yeah, I'm going to Cal. Cool. Yeah. Look at this guy. Film major. All right, all right. Should be like uh, Stephen Hawking. Uh, for film though. What's that? I'm I'm a film major. Film, film major. major. Interesting. Yeah. What do you want to do? I want to direct. 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 Yeah, right. wow. Awesome. You wow. want to direct ghetto movies like, you know, gang violence movies? Whatever. Any, anything that sounds good. Uh, yeah. yeah. To do anything. Wow. All right. So, so what's your question, Michael? Um, well, I was, I was uh, listening to your show like a month ago. And um, Adam, you said that, that no one wants to have you in any, uh, any movie. Yeah, yeah, no one wants to put me in any movies except for uh, yes. I well, like well, to didn't be in mention, some movies. Yeah, we didn't that? mention Michael's. One of the reasons is is that he won't talk to a casting director, won't go to a casting director. <laughs> he insists on being called and given feel, instructions where he turns up for a role without reading I for. I feel it or as if they should come to my house and take me to the set. Mm-hmm. Um. Yes, well, I, he, he has a reputation for being a pain in the ass. That's what oh, he's please. <laughs> Snoop, we've worked together many a time. Do you find me to be a pain in the ass? you fun to work with him. That's right. A complete professional. I come over to Snoop's house, I get baked, and then I start yeah. eating. He's a complete puff professional. <laughs> Not a professional, but a puff professional. There's uh-huh. no problems whatsoever. That's my main main man name. Hey, Michael. Yeah. Uh, listen, I, I appreciate your interest, and uh, d- don't worry. I'll get in the movies oh. if, if Snoop has to put me in one of his own himself. I, I, I actually I want to ask you a question. All right. Um, I no, might be a little bit odd, but I I uh, I wrote my own uh, screenplay. Right. And I I think there are two uh, doctors in the in the film, and I was thinking it would be really cool if you can play one of the doctors. One of the what doctors? One of the doctors? And like you can play the other other. <laughs> All right, I'll do it. I'm in. All right. Hey, uh, l- listen. Hi, what are you going to do? Send me the script? Uh, yeah. We're, we're, Great, but then you can't read it, right? Isn't that how that works? No, I can't read it. It's <laughs> illegal to read it, and I can't read, which is really the reason I can't read it. <laughs> um, but you, you call All right, but Adam, listen. You, you, you ever out in the L.A. area? Uh, I'm afraid not, no. All right, good. Then stop by. No. <laughs> Never out here, huh? Um, I, I can come down. All right, listen. This is the time of the show. And I'm telling you, we've got to get some T-shirts made up because this is the point in the call where I'd go, listen, buddy, we're going to send you out a T-shirt. What do you say? <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, or like a official uh, Loveline Cowbell, Dr. Drew and Adam, uh, Mootastic <laughs> Cowbell or something. We need some swag to hand out. So when it gets uncomfortable in minute four, the calls that aren't going well with the guy in the wheelchair, I can just say, hey, pal, we're going to sit you out with a windbreaker. Up some up. lovely parting gifts. Yeah. Yeah. Michael, uh, I'm sorry. I guess I can't read the script because uh, then there's all kinds of legalities and stuff. But uh, you're going to Berkeley. You're fine. You just uh, keep on top of that. It's the best of the best of Loveline. We're here with Snoop Dogg, and we'll be right back.
We are back with the best of the best of Loveline. I'm Adam, that's Dr. Drew. And for those of you who did not get an ass full of the <laughs> Snoop Man in the first segment, got more. here's a second heaping helping. All right, let's, uh, let's talk to Jesse, who's uh, 19. Jesse? Hey, how you doing? What's up? Not much. Um, I was wondering about uh, consensual age. I have a girl who's 19 yeah. and a girl who's 17 who really like me. And I'm wondering if it's legally okay to uh, go out with them and have sex with them and all that. You're how old? Huh? You're how old? I'm 19. Well, no the, what I've got here for the state of Colorado, which it says you're calling from, 17 is age of consent in your state. You might want to check. This is somewhat old material. Uh, Ageofconsent.com. In fact, Ann, why don't we get up that site and reprint stuff, get it updated. They have an ageofconsent.com? Yep. And that's it? You just check it, figure out what it is for the state you're in, and that's yeah. it? Yeah. And that never varies within the state, does it? No. It's a statewide the same thing. age, no. no matter what you ask? So I thought 18 no, no, no. was legal. And that's, but each state is different. Oh, serious? Yeah. Yeah, see, what's I always say sounds dumb. We ought to just decide on one. Like, you know, one age for the draft, one yeah. age to drink, one age yeah. to buy cigarettes. Why not one age to get laid? Yeah, 18 is sound like a cool number. Because you live in uh, Hawaii or Arkansas, or I don't know where the low ones Snoop, are. Snoop's don't... back on Sesame Street. <laughs> That's it. <laughs> Boom, he's on. This is his bit. He's yes. going to explain the age of consent. That's, uh, 18, exactly. baby. That, that's, that's, that's a good that's thing. That's I can complain about that. The kid's got to learn how to count. Why not count, to, count? The, <laughs> count to the age of consent with Snoop Dogg? Can you count? <laughs> <laughs> All right, Jesse. It seems like you're okay, but get on that uh, internet and find out for sure. All right. Thank you. All right, don't, don't get anyone pregnant. Give them a couple of months. Wait till their birthday before you really give it to them, Jess. No problem, I will. Adam, I want to say that you're a guide, and thank you so much for all the knowledge that you give to everybody. Thank you, Jesse. And, uh, thanks to Dr. Drew and to Snoop Dogg. What's up, man? Ain't it, man? I got to do it. Take care, Jesse. I don't answer like that. See, listen. See, mm-hmm. Snoop has good answers. Yeah, like, they people, demand I got to do it. People say, hey, Adam, I think you're a guide. And I go, hey, gee, thanks a lot there, pal. <laughs> Snoop's like, hey, you got to do it? And I'm do it. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Well, let's... Uh, when are they going to do that uh, Starsky and Hutch movie, do you know? Uh, we're supposed to be shooting in uh, March, April, and May. Yeah, that that uh, that was made. Who was that? Antonio Vargas? Antonio Vargas, uh, David Soul, And uh, Paul Glazer. Paul Glazer. Michael Glazer or something He had like a middle that. name, yeah. I got it. Jeff? Yeah. You're 30? Yes, I am. What's up? Uh, well, I've got a question for all you guys. Um, well, first, have you seen the movie Bowling for Columbine? No, I haven't seen it yet. I heard it was good. Yeah, it's awesome. It's it's uh it's basically a documentary where Michael Moore investigates the uh the prevalence of violence in American culture. Right. And um he goes through, you know, the typical arguments about, you know, because guns are so widely available here in America whereas in England right, you know, they right. don't have guns so they don't have murders. Right. Um but then he looks at Canada and Canada you know they have millions of guns for all their in all their households, and yet they don't have many you know gun murders that are going on. Yeah. Well, let me let me say this because uh, we got to go to break. We do a lot of this, you know, like we do that thing where it's like they have no almost no breast cancer in Japan, so we should start eating this, and then and and and, and in in Greenland they have this, but they don't have that, and then yeah. here we have this, but we don't have that. It's just starting to turn out that certain places they have this and they don't have that, and we should just accept it. It doesn't always have to do with diet or climate or guns in the household. Certain cultures, all cultures are a little bit different, and it's not the fact that there is stuff available. It's the fact that that's what the culture chooses to use. Do you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Let's let's continue this discussion. It's interesting. Uh, All right. Snoop Dogg uh, here tonight. Yeah. We will... uh, yeah, see, see, people should say to Snoop, Snoop, look at you. You got six pack abs. You have five uh, percent body fat. How do you do it? And Snoop would say, "Well, in my culture, we drink orange soda, we eat fried catfish, and we'd be riding feverishly." Okay, we got to do that. <laughs> well, we 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 wouldn't want to do that, would we? We <laughs> work for a, us. Drink an occasional forty ounce of some old English. Yeah, yeah, before you go to bed. Yeah, right before. We'll be back. Yeah, it's 
Loveline, the best of the best of Loveline. And you know it's a good show when one Jimmy Kimmel enters the studio. Dear, dear, Harry Gassy. Then Harry and Gassy talks about his love of shaving, mm -hmm. removing his hair, which mm -hmm. is almost a bizarre obsession with him. Mm -hmm. And then uh, I, I was his doctor for a brief period and mm -hmm. uh, discovered that he has a urethral stricture, mm -hmm. which he uh, translates into a small pee hole. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I like the way he uses clinical terms. Nice. Sure. Yeah. All right. So everyone, enjoy Jimmy Kimmel. Hey, everybody, it's Loveline. I'm Adam Carolla. That's Dr. Drew. Hey, Jim, you ever heard Adam's theme song? I have, but I love it if you want to play it again. Yeah, this is it. This is it right here. This is a song that plays as I enter the trendy bar with my leather jacket slung over my shoulder. Oh, I guess when you sing in slow yeah. motion. When you go to the strip wearing club my tonight. boots. Yeah, yeah, chicks checking me out. Wearing your boots. Yeah, this is my song. <laughs> yeah, you can picture me like going. It's like slow motion. And Jimmy, here's what they see. Here's what the chicks see. <laughs> I can't even picture Adam out. <laughs> Never mind in boots. Let me tell you something about what is going on in this room, Drew. <laughs> you're still, and you're still, you didn't take a break? It's a night in heaven. He, first of all, he just let one fly during my theme song. And how dare you break wind during my theme song? Well, that's my theme song. This, understand, this is like running out on the field during the national anthem. Do you understand what a slap in the face that is, Kimmel? And number two, Drew, yeah. uh, two, two thoughts. Right. One is, whatever I've done to you in the past, my worst night, yeah. put, put two zeros behind that because that's God. what Jimmy is doing tonight. Oh, my God. Number one. Number two... <laughs> number two. <laughs> number two about number two. This studio here is 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 really equivalent to Tupperware. Yes. I mean <laughs> heated I'm, I'm, out, yes. out, in, out in a noonday sun. I am still yeah. smelling Jimmy's first fart. You understand? I mean, I I just opened the door and was hit with a, a wave of gas, like a like like the backdraft ride at the Universal. Here's the comedy, though, is that you were able to identify Jimmy's fart like some sort of special bottle of wine that uh, is you know a certain year and certain yeah. Chateau. It's assertive without yeah. being pushy. Yeah. Yeah. The, the number one fart. Yeah, oh, my That's God, this is so enjoy so the bad. bouquet. Swirl it around. It's so, uh, so bad. Hey, you realize I won't be able to bring these clothes onto the carry on <laughs> on the airplane in four days. They're still going to be that bad. You have to burn them. Yeah. All right, Drew. Find the next caller. Bing. Bing. Twenty-one. Yeah. Yeah. Bang. That's me. Yeah. Yeah. I wanted to talk to Jimmy about having trouble aiming. Yeah. yeah. It's not aiming. It's a, my penis uh, is defective. It doesn't work like normal penises do. Oh really? And uh, excuse me, it's peni. Yeah, no, no, you're right. It's not peni. Like normal peni do, and um, and uh, there's nothing I can do about it. Yeah, there's nothing I can do about mine either. I have two holes in it. It splits off into a Y. Isn't that nice. Hmm. Yeah. I had that once. Yeah, they had to. Uh, you, you, why do you have two holes in it? it? Is like, is it healed in the middle of of the one hole? Well, what happened was I was born with it. I think my mom had gonorrhea or something when she was pregnant with me. Really? Uh, she was a slut. But anyway... Well, Bing's a barrel of laughs. Yeah, Bing's yeah. a barrel of laughs. Anyway... Bing, uh, you ought yeah. to do greeting cards. <laughs> so, <laughs> your mom's a slut, that. you have two holes in your penis, and yeah. uh, now what? Um, I have a real tough time aiming, and I was just telling Jimmy that, you know, I feel where he's coming from, all that good stuff. It's a septate urethra. It's, so, it's not, one of them doesn't dead end. They're just a septum right down the middle, right? Right, right. All right, so a septate urethra. Yeah, that happened to me, and I had to have it sliced open. And yeah. that's what you should do. Oh, you had, you had the dual action? I well, have dual here's, action. It comes out of both, yeah. First, I had a very small uh, urethra, as you know. Then they made it bigger, but while it was healing, the middle part healed up. Oh. And so then I wound up having two holes, oh, boy. which was no good. Then they had to cut it open again. And now I have one hole, but it, there's no uh, there's no accuracy whatsoever. Yeah. And, there's, and it's completely unpredictable. And his balls are above his penis. Yeah. <laughs> that's right. They're nice. on top. He wears oh, them like nice. a hat. That's yeah, nice. it's a mess down there. When I was like 12 <laughs> like years old, my cannon. mom told me that she was going to have me go to the doctor and he was going to take you know, a knife to my penis, and I, I was scared. I cried for days because I thought a doctor was going to come near me with a knife. Me too. Oh, me I, too. I hey, crying. Drew, will you get rid of Bing, please? Well, I, yeah. I don't know of any evidence that gonorrhea in the mom has anything to do with this uh, septic urethra. So. And, and Kimmel, if you'd start urinating in the sink like moi, I have, I have oh, started have that. Yeah, okay. I have anyway. started it. I knew you'd, I knew you'd come around. Oh yeah. no! Yeah, another fart. Yeah, I farted again. <laughs> God. Yeah. Mike is fifteen. Yeah. 
<laughs> What's up, Mike? Hi. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I gotta guess. <laughs> you gotta have a little of this. <laughs> Wait a minute. Okay. Oh! No! Oh! oh, man! Yep. Wow! It's all natural. Jesus Christ, what you is sure that? you're not on the juice? What is that in Corolla? What is that? Give a hammer. See if he hits himself over the head. No, you know why? Because I'm 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 bothered by the fact that there's a fart floating around the room somewhere, and it's going to sneak up on me. I'd rather confront it. <laughs> that, and you won't get the full effect. <laughs> yeah, Mike. like I'm one of those guys. If if I, if I think there's an intruder in the house, I run downstairs with a bat. I don't I don't hide under the bed and call nine one one. That's the way I approach life. <laughs> it's not for everybody, but it works for me. All right, Mike. Yeah, you, you give one hundred ten percent. That's right. right. What's up, Mike? Okay. Whenever I shave, I get, like, monstrous amounts of zits pop up. Monstrous amounts? Yeah. And when you don't shave? <laughs> what? When you don't shave, there's no problem. When I don't... Sh well, after I shave, they'll then they'll go away eventually. Mm -hmm. But if I shave I, again, they pop up. I can help you with this, actually. I know a lot about shaving, actually. Um, do you, what kind of razor do you use? Why do you know a lot about shaving? I, I just do. I, it's something I've really experimented with and studied. Why? Drew, do you remember? Didn't I give you one of those uh, hot lather dispensers? Yes. Yeah, yeah because I, I'm I'm really uh, involved with shaving. He gave wow. it to me. What kind of a razor are you using? Oh, that's right. Adam passed the one you gave to him on to me. Uh, Gillette kind. Okay. That's the problem. This Gillette razor is the greatest razor uh, in history, but it's a little too good for certain people because they're not really zits. They're ingrown hairs. Right. They look like zits and they turn into zits, but you're getting too close to shave. What you have to do is a lot of black people have this this problem right, actually. Right. That's right. You, you have to get stay this with your family and raise your goddamn children. Right. And besides that, though, there's a product, oh. and you go into the black um, beauty uh, supply stores. It, it's always funny to go in there first of all, <laughs> and it's a whole new world. But they have something called um, Ten Skin. Yeah, you know what it's yeah. called. That's yeah. what it's Adam called. And that. You have yeah. to. It takes months to apply it to really get it to work. But once you've applied like it hell, for months, too, right? Yeah, yeah, it's good. But once you've applied it for months, your skin uh, gets conditioned to a point where you can shave and not have a problem. So you, do you use it like a shaving cream? It's more like a lotion. But do you yeah, use you, it when you shave or do you use it after you shave? After you shave, yeah. Huh. Hey, is this is Mike still there? He is talking about his face, isn't he? Yeah. I, mean, yeah. I just want to make sure. Mike, did you get all that? You know what to do? Yeah, kind of. I don't think we have a black beauty store here. Where are you? Just Utah. Selma. Yeah, oh, no, he definitely don't. <laughs> Call Carl Malone. <laughs> he can help you. Uh, no, I would uh, go on, online then. Look for Tend, T-E-N-D, Skin. And here's the other thing, uh, young Mike. You can use uh, Oxy-10, too. You can just lather that on your, uh, the infected area. Yeah, after yeah. you're done shaving. That'll knock stuff down pretty good, too. Huh. Hey, Jimmy, what about you think about the Kiehl's cream? Try uh, I like it. I like it. Yeah, it's nice stuff. Makes yeah, sense. I'm on to the whole um, spread-on cream that comes in the jar now. I have a whole process that I go through. I take a shower. I put this pre-shave oil on my face. Jesus. Well, in the shower, I'll put conditioner from a hair conditioner on my face just to soften it up a little. Oh, my I God. I put the pre-shave oil Before you oil masturbate on. or after? No, I don't masturbate in the shower. Oh, wait a minute. Adam, please. No, that's his cousin that's Sal. That's cousin Sal, yeah. yeah. Wait a minute. Didn't you, didn't you leave a present for Adam in the shower one time? Well, every once in a while, but this is not... Yeah, yeah. yeah we yeah. might as well get into that. I actually but, fired that from sitting on the, <laughs> on the toilet into the shower, to be <laughs> fair to he me. He was actually land-based. Oh, that doesn't count. No, no way. Face. No, you're standing yeah. over the tub? All right. Look, yeah. We, we got to tell this story, but I want Jimmy to finish his uh, shaving thing first. So, uh, yeah, I, I got an, a lotion, a, not no, a, an oil, pre-shave oil which I put on my face. It's really just like oil. It looks like right. olive oil. And then there's a shaving cream that I cover my face with. Then I shave. I use the Gillette uh, um, Sensor XL. That's Actually, the I think they have a, a yeah. step up now. And then um, and then I'll put on some, uh, if there's any blood spots, I put on the styptic pencil. Mm. And then I have a uh, sh aftershave lotion. Wow. You, you know what's funny? It's like he's a uh, Rula Lenska when it comes to his facial care. And then he blows a big fart <laughs> and fans it at me with a peachy folder. And it's really an interesting dichotomy. Yes. The great thing is, yeah. look at me right now. I look like Vlade Divac. <laughs> <laughs> he hasn't shaved in three days. Yeah, well, it's too, it's such a process. It takes hours. All right. This is Josh, 30. Jo yeah, it's me, Josh. Yeah, good. Hey, I just wanted to say, first off, that it's a, really, it's a real privilege and an honor to be able to talk to both um, Adam and Jimmy at the same time. 
Really? <laughs> Thanks. Thanks. If only you could smell good. me. Huh. Yeah. Tonight. And one thing, Jimmy, really quick, after the shaving and everything is over with, you know, yes. your your prep work and all that, yeah. don't forget a fresh man pond. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. 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 man pond is pond nice. Is very important. That was a uh, co- commercial parody that we did on the Man Show, which was a. Uh, it was just a big, big. Guy. <laughs> so they always sound so bad when you describe them, but it basically it was just a tampon for the ass. Nice. Uh, I, li- I like the mascula personally. <laughs> mascula was good too. Yeah, that's a uh, that was a uh, a detergent that's specially formulated to remove protein stains, <laughs> Ma- male protein stains. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, of course. Uh, All right, Josh, what's up, buddy? Um, I'm having a problem with um, being able to um, get away from my girlfriend. She sleeps with um, other guys on occasion, and it makes me jealous as anything, and I can't seem to get away from her because I'm thinking about, in the back of my mind, the guys she's with, and she's getting banged while I'm not around, and right. it drives me crazy, and yet I can't, for some reason, get away from her because I enjoy the sex when and if I'm getting it and I don't know how to walk away from it. Is she your first girlfriend? She's my first long-term serious relationship. Are you afraid you're not going to get sex anywhere else if you let this one go? Um... I guess so. Is there something I, I wrong I with you? Is that way, to be completely honest. Is there something wrong with you or something about you we should know? There's or? nothing wrong with me. Um, I've just... You know, maybe it's just the self-esteem thing. I'm sure it is. But well, why why is this your only girlfriend at, at age 30? Oh, well, I've been with her for seven years. All right. No. No, that's true. All right, All right. She's, she's trouble, though. She's and the whole time she's been sleeping with other guys? I've been finding out this, actually, um, from, oh. from her father. Oh. Which, you know... Oh, um, God. She, she lives in a trailer, and I live in an apartment. <laughs> and <laughs> it's funny, I know, but... <laughs> Um, he tells me that occasionally, you know, guys are over there for the weekend and stuff like that. And then when I ask her about it, you know, of course it's not true, you know, according to her. But maybe she's what sort of telling you something. Maybe she really needs to get out of this and doesn't know how to do it either. And so she kind of acts out as opposed to being more honest about her desire to end this relationship. Well, wait a minute. How old is she? She's a she's month 12. younger than I am. 30. Okay, just say 30 wise. <laughs> right. Okay, so I hate doing the math for everybody. <laughs> she's 30, and she's still living in a trailer with her dad? No, she doesn't live with her dad, but they live in the same court. Oh. It's a Springer thing, you oh. know what I mean? Yeah. Oh, really? So she, she, the dad sees guys coming in, in and out right. of her trailer. Exactly. Exactly. What's her dad, dad do, just out of curiosity? He's an electrician. Okay. Well, what do you think? It was a CEO of a yeah, Fortune 500 corporation just chose to live in a trailer? <laughs> True. Use your head. All right. Oh. Look, break up with her. Yeah, I'm afraid You so. have to do this. What do, this I is do, your f- what do I do to get my mind off of it, to, to get over the jealousy? To get another afraid. girl. You've well, got to hang yourself and beat off. But he, 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 he won't get another <laughs> no. girl, Jimmy. That's All the right. problem. He's, he's going to go out there with that desperation you know what? on him. You know what you got to do? Right. This is a good plan. Be serious Ask. With me. I, mean, I'm, I am going to be very okay. serious with you. Right. Ask three girls a day out. Make it your commitment. Make it, just say to yourself, I'm going to ask, every day I'm going to ask three girls to go out with me. Okay. It's going to work out eventually. And that's what, saying, that's what, keeping me occupied on doing something more positive, right? Well, listen, you're, you know, when you get another girl, you're going to forget all about this one. Absolutely. No question about it. Susie, 43. Susie. Hi, guys. Thank you so much for everything you do for teenagers. You're required listening in our house in the evening before the kids go to bed. See? No. Yeah. Thank, you. Thank you, Susie. And well, what do you see? Crank anchors. Yeah, 1030, well, Sunday night. you know what, Adam? We don't have TV. I'm sorry to say that. Cool. I, I what? Use TV. <laughs> nice. What? Ooh. We don't have TV. Good. That's child you, abuse. You yank the TV. Well, the kids came home, and they all they did was sit in front of road rules and... and Stupid stuff on MTV. Love line. I, I cut the I cut the cable and I ordered the paper. And now they actually sometimes accidentally open the paper and start to read. So cool. Oh, a good thing. Let what? me tell you what happened. A tornado hit the trailer park and pulled the cable right out of the side of the double wide. Right. Be honest, Susie. No, Adam. I swear. All right. Swear. Uh, all right. What else up, Susie? That's exactly what happened. All right. What's up? So anyway, Adam. I'd just like to know, I'm very curious, how did you propose? You blew me off in the lightning round last Oh, this is you? <laughs> uh, listen, here, here's what happened. 
All right, I got engaged, and then I broke up for a year. And then my girlfriend, once we got back together, she was like, she kept bothering me to get married, you know? <laughs> so, we were very romantic. Uh, she must, she's must be, I hope she's listening. <laughs> well, listen, here, quite frankly, here's my thing. I'm getting married. Isn't that enough? <laughs> I mean, that's the way I look at it. Do you know what I'm saying? <laughs> He's it's like, not kidding at all. It's like when you're a kid, it's like your dad is driving you to Disneyland. Does he have to put on the chauffeur's cap or can he <laughs> just have his dignity? <laughs> yeah, that's all I'm saying. Just give me my dignity. That's all. So she finally... <laughs> So it wasn't really a proposal. It was a, a no. It was a capitulation. Capitulation. capitulation yeah. Maybe she 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 kept bothering me about you know when. So I said, look, we'll get married. Stop bothering me. And then she said, well, you haven't engaged. We haven't. You haven't. You know, we're not engaged. And you, I said, you haven't asked have, me. We don't have to be. We just set a marriage date, and it's it's taken care of. You know, I I did the math, and she said, anyway, she kept bothering me. So finally. She was wearing the, her engagement ring, but it was on her, her other hand. What did you, you, you uh, actually got her a ring, but what, did she go buy it herself? No, it was her old ring. Oh, my God. From it the was, last yeah, time. Yeah, from the I last one. It. She moved it to the other hand. Okay. And so I pulled it off the other hand and put it on the other hand while we were watching uh, The uh, Tough Man on uh, <laughs> FX. <laughs> Very romantic. <laughs> Wasn't it yeah. BattleBots? No, it was probably. I know where it was. It was Friday night. I think I was watching a tough man competition. <laughs> yeah, I got down on one knee, but I beat the count and I was back up. Oh my no! I, I was just saying. I, I don't go for all that. I'm trying to set a tone. All right. All right. So who do we got next? We're going to talk to Derek. He is 17. Derek. Derek. Hello. Hey, what's up? Hey, uh, I'm on. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Uh, I don't believe already, but whatever it is. Yeah. Me neither. Yeah. What? No, no, no. I'm serious. This is true. Hello? Yeah, we're here. Okay. Well, uh, it's just, you know, sometimes I, I feel like the desire to be of the opposite sex. Tell me more. What do you mean? Well, sometimes I, I, I'm, I feel, like, turned off by um, behavior of, like, other guys and, like, I don't know, maybe my history was, like... My dad and my stepdad hasn't been so good, but... Um, They've been physically abusive to you? Well, yeah, my stepdad was, and my dad, just he just kind of... He left really early, and I don't hear from him much. All right, so understand. Maybe it's that you really are trying to get back in touch with that male element that was so abandoning to you. Maybe it's yeah. that you, you need to be really so close that you actually want to... You know what I mean? Hmm? Well, wait, wait a minute. Wait, are you saying that you're having homosexual thoughts? No, I don't think I'm a homosexual. I just think that... But if you were a woman, would you have sex with a male? No, I don't think so. Okay, so you'd be wait a... Wait a minute, Drew. What kind of question is that? So I'd, you, I'd have no, sex with a male if I was a woman. That's a good question. No, no, many, 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 many male to female transsexuals become oh, a woman. No. Oh, no. Oh, no. Adam firing back. <laughs> yeah, a little salvo coming <laughs> Jimmy's way. Yeah. <laughs> Many yeah, male to do female transsexuals do that in order to be lesbians. <laughs> yeah, but it, does uh, he want to be a transsexual? No, uh, no, I, I would never like want to take it to that level. But no, 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 that's not the point. I'm just saying, I, I just, I, I just have these thoughts, and you know, I get confused, and you know, I, you know what I the safest thing to do? Me. Do you want to you know what he should like, be? What? He should be a magician. <laughs> yeah, that's a way of not declaring your, your sex. Yeah, it puts you in a limbo, and it's good career training. <laughs> right. All right, but wait a minute. Let me try to get to the bottom of uh, Derek's problem. And by the way, Derek, when I'm in charge, it's yeah. going to be either Derek or Dirk. One of those names is going to be eliminated. There will not be both. Okay. Well, okay. That's my uh, name. Now, you, you are attracted to females. Yes. 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 You, right. Do you, do you have a girlfriend? No, eh, I don't. No. I don't okay. really have many right. friends. But okay. you hate and, men. You hate and men. And you're not you're not attracted to men. No. But you're, you don't like men. Not not really. I don't like. No, I and don't like. You, do you have any male friends? Um, a few who are nice to me, but for the most part, no. It's so does much the smell so. of Does the smell of a fart give you a boner? <laughs> no, no. Oh well, we can't. Good. We guess we can't talk to him. What? Nothing. Okay. That. that but the, the deal is, though, you're so unhappy with men, you don't even want to be one. Oh, uh, it's, I, yeah, I just, I feel that, 
you know, uh, you know, just listening, even listening to your show, I mean, you know, all those guys out there, they just seem like such screw-ups and stuff, and, you know, what they do in the relationships, and, and what I hear at school, and it makes me sick sometimes, you know what I mean? All right, yeah. but you, okay. you, don't, you don't have any plan to do anything about it. No. Okay. No. Drew, put him on hold. All right. Just he, he's confused. He, yeah. he had a bad upbringing. Yeah. Little therapy. He's not gay. Thank God, he's not gay. I don't know. And he might be gay. He's possibly gay. He's probably gay. I'm sure he's gay. <laughs> Derek, you're definitely gay. You're currently inside a man. <laughs> doesn't like farts. <laughs> he doesn't like farts. He may be gay like Anderson. All right. So look, just take it slow. You don't have to make a uh, declaration to your. Uh, sexual proclivity at this stage or don't cut sexual, your penis off yeah, right. and get a little therapy for stepdaddy who beat you right, okay. Drew let's get one more in before we go to break it really right, if you're gay wouldn't you like the smell of ass Adam mm -mm. yeah it's interesting but it doesn't it doesn't work that way really? I'm so anti-gay I can't even smell it because I, I puke Oh, you can't smell you can't smell ass no if I do yeah. it just makes me so nause nauseated because I know where it's coming from yeah you would you would be in real bad shape in this studio <laughs> right now I wouldn't be in the studio I'd be gone you would be you would be heaving like Jimmy on a fishing boat. Yeah, right now. Uh, Anderson is outraged and offended at him. <laughs> Sorry, it's your buddy. puerile behavior. We got to go to break. Okay, sure. it is uh, Love God. Line. Yeah, I'm uh, Adam. That is uh, Dr. Drew. We'll be I right back. I want to go to Hawaii. This. Yay! Yay! Hey, yo, it's Loveline, the best of the best of the best of Loveline. And how can you argue with that? Coldplay, Snoop Dogg, Jimmy Kimmel, Eminem? Now Jim Belushi. Jim Belushi and uh, Jim, who did a uh, movie with uh, Tupac Shakur. All right. Yeah, we talked to him about the uh, late, great Tupac. Hey, everybody, it's Loveline. I'm Adam. That is Dr. Drew. Well, I over wish there. I had the other ones because they were a little more solid. You know? <laughs> Jim is... Uh, Talking about his ladies during the uh, commercial break. Jim Belushi's our guest tonight. Ladies. I like the way you say ladies. Well, I mean over the years. Over the years. Kim? Yes. Yeah. Hey. Hi. Hi. You sound like uh, Mr. Mooney from the... Uh, what the hell oh, show was that? No, Miss, Mr. Mooney is uh, from the Lucille Ball show. Oh, <laughs> well, yeah. Well, yes. <laughs> Mrs. Carmichael. Oh, Mrs. Carmichael. That's exactly Yes, Mrs. Carmichael. <laughs> I've been doing a little party in town. All right, baby. Okay, there we go. But um, I do want to say um, hi to uh, Drew and Adam. Jim. But my hey. call is for Jim. Yes. Uh, hi, Jim. It's an honor to talk to you. Uh, how, how do you do? <laughs> uh, I'm doing great. Um, I just want to say I love your television show. Uh, thank I'm you. I'm so glad it's picked up again. Thank you. You deserve it. And um, I just have a question about a movie you did with Tupac. Yes. Oh, gang related. Yeah, great, great movie. Yes, it was, and um, I would like to know what it was like working with Tupac. I well, mean, well, Tupac, you know, he, you know, he had that whole gangster rap thing going for him, but uh, he, he, you know, he had a really great, great allure. I mean, illusion about who he was. But on the set, he was a solid professional actor, and we got along really great. Huh. And okay. we, uh, we, he was, he was a musician. Uh huh. And I'm, I'm a bit of a musician, and uh, I, I, we actually did some verbal jazz together, is what I consider it. We, we improvised a lot of scenes together. We never talked about what we we're going to do. Sometimes I would be up in a scene, you know, being a little louder. And he would kind of come underneath it like a rhythm guitar. And then the next take, he would kind of take the lead, and I would come underneath. And uh, we just had this great kind of chemistry and connection together. What year was that movie? Was that 95? Yeah, I think 95. Sounds yeah, about right. I think so. Yeah, it was, it was a great experience working with him. And, I, and unfortunately, you know, with his death, you know, we won't right, see any more right. because I thought he would develop into quite a strong... I thought he could have, too. Yeah, I think yeah. he would have come a long way. I loved him. His legend will live on. Yeah, I, and we had a kind of funny thing because he... Uh, he I, I brought him some Frank Sinatra CDs. Oh, he no. never listened to Frank Sinatra. 
Never heard him? Oh, man, he loved Frank Sinatra. Really? Oh, God. He wanted. We were trying to figure out a rap version of Fly Me to the Moon. <laughs> and uh, But he's, he finally, you know, after about three days of, like, us screwing with it on the set, you know, trying to figure out a rap version, he goes, you know what? That melody that he sings is so beautiful. Wow. There's no way the note should change. So, right. So, yeah, so at least I brought him a little, yeah, a little jazz too. Hey, Kim. Yes. Thanks, baby. Uh, well, can I have a I have a comment for you, Adam? Oh. Can I ask you, please? All right, go ahead. Okay. Last night I was listening, and you were saying that all blondes over forty are just ragged out. And no, I didn't say that. With. Didn't say that. But I want to tell you that I am a hot 42-year-old. Right. I bet I, I am just... hot, hot, hot. Yeah, you're hot because you're drunk, drunk, drunk. <laughs> no, that makes no. you hot, hot, hot. No, I'd be flaccid, flaccid, flaccid if you were with me. I no, guarantee I have, you that. I have two children, no stretch marks. I'm five foot eight, 130 pounds. Yeah, you got that weird hair and some funky teeth. No, I have Farrah Fawcett hair. I am still called Farrah. Right, right. You're fat. <laughs> Farrah Fawcett, <laughs> circa 1977, I know, right? But I don't look like Farrah. I'm better looking than You're being Farrah. abusive now. Okay, all right. right. Give her her props. I just want you to know that not all 40-year-old women are over the hill. Thank you for standing no, up for I, yourself. No, I did not. I did not say that. All right, now listen. And by why, don't you, why don't you say what you said? Here's what I said. I, uh, I, I said that blonde women have a, a prime that probably is a, a more of a prime than it any trumps. other nationality. It, it trumps, it trumps any nationality. And, 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 but here's how it works. It's, it's interesting how it works to me. And life is, is very even this way. Jim's Nature. already cracking up. You haven't heard your point yet. Okay, already... now here, here's what I'm saying. Black women, Chinese women, Mexican women, they never have the prime that the blonde has. There's the, nothing... The peak. Yeah, there's nothing, there's nothing hotter than a 19-year-old blonde with the blue eyes and the blonde hair and the legs and the whole thing. That's not a racial thing. It's, it's a fact. Mm -hmm. every, na every nationality in the world is attracted to a leggy 19-year-old blonde. But the candle that burns bright burns a little shorter. Now, the black woman can still look completely hot well into her 40s and 50s she has a longer prime right the right, blonde if you, if it was if it was a if it was a if graph it, the blonde the... would fall off much faster than the nationalities that never hit that peak unbelievable with the time you spend thinking of these things <laughs> i do i spend, yeah, a, lot let's, let's spend a lot of time this let's is that north more, hollywood thing you were talking about earlier right <laughs> more explicit if the area under the curve would be greater for the black woman yeah mm -hmm. yeah Absolutely. and and asian and uh, hispanic and and I think all the way down the line, which is w the higher your peak in your prime, the shorter it is. Do you think that's a skin issue that our skin wrinkles and stuff when you're when you're fairer? I, I, I think that's uh, that's part of it. I haven't really exactly broken it down. Yeah, you got to go to that level now because. <laughs> but but I'm real. I'm going to work on it. Let's I'm go to the lab. science part of it now. <laughs> <laughs> yes, it's uh, melanin, right? Is that what the, is that the skin color is? Mm. Yeah, that that could be it. The more uh, the more of that, the longer your prime, but the less your uh, the the uh, the less peak. height you get. Okay. Lo lower the peak. That's right. All right, let's. Uh, We're take three gym calls. Three gym calls. All right, we starting off with uh, a, gym, a gym selection. Yeah, Angel. Yes. You're 16. Yes. What's up? Um. Okay. I oh, Jim has picked these calls. Well, no, this Jim has picked and or their calls for him. All right. I feel special now. <laughs> um, I have two questions, actually. Um, since I've been with my boyfriend, which has been about three months, I've been giving him, like, excessive hand jobs just in the most random places, whether, you know, parents are there or not. And oh, whoa, whoa, whoa. Parents present? Yeah, well, they're not aware of what's going on. Like, in the back of the car when they're driving. Um, wow. Under blankets in the living room. I, I'm willing to bet the parents know something's going on. Oh, they know we're, we're sexually active, but they don't know what's going on at the time. No, I'm willing to bet. That, I mean, there's just pheromones, really, uh, for God's uh, sakes. Uh, <laughs> you know what I mean? The parents, yeah. parents are not born yesterday. Yeah. Um, Unless it's the back of a trailer or something. Like <laughs> Bill Winnebago. <laughs> <laughs> no. Um, but I used to be um, a total subconscious person, just hated sex, everything about it. And, I mean, I just can't stop now. Whether he finishes, he'll finish, and I'll just keep going. Yeah, I mean, boy. I've done it, like, four times in a row before. And I'm wondering, could there be something, like, psychologically wrong with me? Whoa. Why I can't stop? It hold on a second. Slow hold down. Second. It doesn't, turn you, it doesn't turn you on? No, not at all. Well, hold on a second. got to get uh, into that. But I want to I wanna broach the uh, four times in a row thing. 
<laughs> Does that mean you just go, he goes four times in a row? Well, yeah, it was at his grandma's house, and we just, he'd, we'd go, and he'd finish, and I'd wait a few minutes, and I'd just go again. <laughs> and I would just keep Sounds going. like you guys are having kind of young fun. <laughs> yeah. Well, no, but she's not aroused by it. Do you do anything? Not aroused by it at all? Not at all. Do you do anything else with him? You have sex with him? Yeah. But I can never, like, I, I have a problem with orgasm. Well, what is sex. the fun in this for you? What is What do you get out of it? I don't know. <laughs> That's the problem. What's I in it for him? I mean, you're having sex. He's getting four handies <laughs> in a row. <laughs> I, I don't I don't know. I'm this guy's a star. And where's Grandma during uh, this? Just in a different room. In a, in a urn or <laughs> she actually she's alive? No, she's still alive. You're not scared she's going to roll in on uh, number like three and a half or she something? Has. They have before. We've been walked in on, but they don't. We kind of move and <laughs> they never say anything about it. If they know, they never say anything. How old is he? Fifteen. Wow. Well, and what does he have? Does he have hippie parents, or are they drunk, or no. what's up? No, um, they're actually really strict about it, because we just recently told them we were having sex, and they just kind of like... Uh, that's no more in the car. <laughs> that's it. Yeah. Not in the back of the not car. Not until I get it scotch guarded, for Christ's sake. And not yeah. four times in a row. It's going to hurt. <laughs> yeah. say, Angel, can't you give him a break in between? Yeah, a little, a little longer break, 15 minutes. Well, even with them, when I'm on you the You got the with- Thomas guide all screwed up. <laughs> <laughs> Page at 295 is uh, stuck all the way through 427. That's all the San Fernando Valley. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, even when I'm on the phone with him, I'll purposely turn him on and then try to get him off on the phone. And okay. that does nothing for you? Does give you a sense of power, control? Um, no, not really. I mean... Does it I- make you feel powerful to be able to have that kind of... Uh- no, I don't... I Effect think, on somebody else? I actually think it's funny. I mean, funny. I don't know why, but I think it's funny. Okay. Wow. And anything we need to know about in your past? Um, no, not really. I mean, I used to... Um, a cousin used to, like, touch me when I was, like, eight or nine, but I don't... It, mm-hmm. it wasn't for, like, a long period of time. Uh, mm-hmm. Well, how many, how many times did it happen? Um, I'd say probably five or six. Mm-hmm. Yeah, any any time, though, we talk to someone who has a lot of sexual energy, especially a young girl, and especially one who's doing a lot of sex or performing a lot but doesn't seem to get anything out of it, we got to believe it's being driven by some energy from the past. You, you know what we're saying, Angel? Yeah. So, I mean, you're calling because this is an issue. It feels a little strange to you. Yeah. Maybe, maybe you should uh, examine this a little more closely. Uh-huh. I mean, it's definitely something going on. Now, are you sleeping normally? Yeah, um, well, I have been depressed. Major, I've been diagnosed with major depression. So, I mean, it's well. Off listen, and on. maybe this isn't unipolar depression. Maybe it's bipolar depression. Actually, um, my sister, my older sister, has that. Yeah, I think you might have it too. Oh. Uh, just, just the pressured speech and the manic sexual acting out and the discon all this stuff is, is has a high, high a manic quality to it. Uh huh. And so you, who, do you, are you on antidepressants now? No, not anymore. All right. Um, I, they were on. I was on it when I was cutting, um, but she said yeah. I stopped cutting that I didn't need to be on it. You're a cutter. Uh, I was. All right. So really, this suggests a, this, you know cutting is sort of a borderline thing. That there's a lot yeah. of character. You're borderline too. No, not that I know of. Okay. So there's, there's a bunch of stuff going on here, Angel. Make sure you're cared for by a psychiatrist, not just a primary care doctor. Okay. Yeah. Go and talk about it. If I uh, if I tried to go for number four, <laughs> my balls would turn inside out <laughs> at this age. I really at would. At this age, yeah. Yeah, at 17 no, at you'd 15, be fine now. 15, yeah, right. 17, four would have been just a my balls morning would come, wake-up call. come out of my urethra. I'd have to <laughs> stuff them back into my... <laughs> You read that. You use number two pencil to get my balls she, back she, in. She'd have, she'd have to come up and go. <laughs> yeah, blow it, just blow it blow back, back out. Now, you don't understand. Blow job. No, 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 no. You must no. understand, Sweet Pea. I want you to blow. I got to get my balls back in place. Oh, my God. Four. Sitting, sitting down. with have a dad in the front seat. Probably a... Listening to like Perry Como too. I mean, oh yeah, fly me to the moon. <laughs> I mean, imagine. I mean, that's what you can do at fifteen, everybody. Let's talk to uh, Seth, who has a uh, question for Jim. Seth. Yeah. Hey. Um. Hey, Adam. Hey, Drew. Love the show. Thanks. Thank you. Um. I just want to do uh, compliment Jim on his work in the uh, animated series Gargoyles. Oh, the one that was on was that on Fox. Yeah, it was on Fox or um, Toon Disney, depending on where you lived. Yeah, Fang. Is that the, yes, uh, is, played yes. Fang? Wow, is that still on? I know it was a couple of years know, old, well, right? It was five, six. Yeah, years. yeah, it was uh, back in. It started back in '94. Yeah, '94. 
97, and you can still catch reruns on an occasional Disney Channel now and again. But. Well, gee, I haven't gotten any residuals. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> yeah, boy, thanks for bringing that up. I'm gonna have to chase down those checks. <laughs> yeah, I don't know if they do. I don't know. I don't think they do residuals on uh, cartoons. Oh yeah, they do. I'm sure, they do. Oh, I'm getting effed too because yeah, uh, yeah. I did uh, Buzz Lightyear the cartoon, and they air those all the time. I never get any money uh, out of that. No. Really? Oh yeah, they, I mean they'll buy you out for ten, ten runs, but after that, you know, you need to. Really? Yeah. Hmm. Have right. you ch have you changed your address at all? <laughs> No, because you could call SAG and they have a oh, really? they have a box of checks there that are unclaimed. Wow. Well, I like to go oh, down yeah. and get some. Oh of yeah, they, honest to God, they do. Oh, how I check it every four or five years. <laughs> you do? Oh, yeah. You, you just call them up and call give them your name, up. Say, you got anything with my name yeah, on over there? Basically. Wow. Wow. They're after a SAG. They can find you to send you the ballots. Why don't they? Well, sometimes when you go through different address changes, the companies... You know, oh, I'm going to try that. I'm going to yeah. call them up Monday. Hey, I'm Jim Belushi. <laughs> <laughs> what do you got? You don't recognize a gargoyle voice? Oh, wait a minute. It's Arnold Schwarzenegger. <laughs> that was fang. <laughs> I'll be over. <laughs> yeah, just, just get them all, put them in a manila envelope, and I'll send my assistant Adam to come pick them up. <laughs> <laughs> Nappy-headed guy with the big teeth. <laughs> you'll, you'll know. No question. Just give it to him. All right, let's take a break. Hey, everybody, it's Loveline. Not just Loveline, the best of the best of Loveline. And uh, next guy is a, a big, big, big star who uh, came into Loveline uh, Studios mm, a couple of years back. Mm -hmm. Had a chance to go uh, visit him in his Michigan studio to do a little Crank Yankers oh, nice. uh, not too long ago. Please welcome Eminem. Hello, hello, hello. It is Loveline. I'm Adam Carolla. That is Dr. Drew. Phone number 1 800 L O V E 191. Forget about the fax number. Eminem is our guest tonight. That's Are you right. working with Dr. Dre this time around? Yeah, yeah. And you're recording it out here in Los Angeles? Yeah, I, I mean, I worked with Dre on the last one, but, right. um, you know, Dre only produced three cuts and he pretty much executive produced the whole last album, but this album, Dre is, is, is more involved. And you know what I'm saying? He, he sort of uh, signed you, discovered you in a way? Yeah, discovered me, I guess you could say. Um, I had, you know, I was getting in a lot of rap contests and, and winning a lot of rap competitions or whatever. And um, he had just heard a tape, like a, um, a tape we had pressed up called the Slim Shady EP. Mm -hmm. um, as opposed to the LP that's out now. Right. You know, um, it was like six songs. And three of the songs made it to the, to the, to the LP. But right. um, three of them didn't. And Dre just heard it and he liked it. I was reading in, uh, I guess it was an L.A. Times uh, article on you, that he heard you rapping on a L.A. station. That's what had happened. I mean, he that's how he knew I was in town. Right. You know what I'm saying? He didn't, I don't think he knew really how to get in touch with me or whatever. And then Right, so he knew you were in L.A. if you're on a local station, and right. then he contacted you. Right. Was, that, was he a hero of yours? I mean, was it really cool that uh, yeah, Dr. One Dre time, found you? At one time, Dre was. I mean, especially with N.W.A. You know, the whole that whole N.W.A. era, whatever. And just as a um, as a producer, you know, Dre was like kind of like a, a idol to me. You know what I'm right. saying? Somebody who you know, as I as I started growing up and 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 rapping and getting good at it, you know, I always said, you know, if I ever got with Dre, it'd be over. You know what right. I'm saying? So, I mean, like, five years ago, if I would have asked you if there's one guy you could have to produce you... I would have said Dre. I would have right. said Dre seven years ago. Right. So, that's, you know? uh, that's, that's good then, right? Yeah, it is good. It's kind of ironic. Right. But yeah. ironic, good. All right, we're going to uh, take some calls. You know how the show goes? We talk to uh, screwed up people, and we make fun of them, and then Drew gives them good advice. Wow, I don't know how to make fun of screwed up people, so oh, it's I'm easy. really new at this. Just stick with me. Sarah? Yeah. So, Sarah's got the bisexual roommate. Right. The you're, boyfriend that wants to... You're 18, your roommate's bisexual. Yeah. And your boyfriend wants to have a threesome. Yeah. How, how long it? How long has he been your boyfriend? Only like a month. Like how, how old is he? He's 21. What do you think this says about him? I don't know. <laughs> I mean, I don't, I, mean I don't really know him that well, so... Well, now, now you know something new about him. Yeah. <laughs> All right, well, he's... um. He's uh, He wants to take advantage of the situation. How serious are you two? I mean, we're pretty serious. I mean, I don't. We don't see other people, you know. So I don't know. He's. I don't know. And are you bisexual? No, no, not at all. And what does your roommate think about this? Well, she's kind of like she like she can't. She 
can't believe she's like, I can't believe you've never thought about it. But I mean, she's oh, boy. into it, too. <laughs> oh, boy. Yeah. Yeah. Those two are going to get you drunk. <laughs> I guarantee they're they're making plans to get you drunk as we speak. Okay. They're at the liquor yeah. store right now. <laughs> okay. And that's how it's going to work. You guys are going to get drunk, then you're going to do it. Uh, no, no, no. But that's how it could work. It could work that way. That now, how about, how about maybe you think twice about who this guy is and what his feelings are about you and what his level of commitment is to this relationship? Well, maybe... Uh, Which is nil. Zero. All right, so why not have the threesome? That's a good argument for the threesome, she right? For him. She doesn't want to have one. Not, it's not even in her thinking. Sarah, Sarah, why you don't, don't you just try it, and if you don't like it, then come be with me. <laughs> that's good. that's uh that's my plan for the future too by the way m&m so uh, be ready <laughs> right. so what is you're gonna try though i've been trying to have a threesome for uh, 19 years now but Did as you? soon as i have one yeah. if i don't like it and the good news for you m&m i think i'm gonna enjoy it that's what you should book on that's the good news for me right because if not, i don't enjoy it he's coming to you i'm coming to you oh. all right sarah yeah all right don't do anything you don't want to do then oh but okay things are not what they seem but what I don't think, because, I don't know, I don't want him She wants like, to do it, listen to it. <laughs> no, no, she wants to She wants to make him happy and keep him around and this kind of BS. Come on. Do you want to do it, Sarah? No, not really. But you, you wish he didn't want to do it, but you want to keep him happy, right? Yeah. All right. It's all the wrong reasons, all the wrong impulses. Drew, uh, I'll explain something to Eminem about my partner, Drew. He will not rest until women stop making men happy. Yeah. That's that true. is that his is goal true. in life. Right, he wants to be. eliminate threesomes, oral sex, uh, cooking. What, what, what else do you, you want to criminal. knock <laughs> off the list there, only if, only if men are equally focused on making women happy in that exchange. You know what I'm yeah, saying? Yeah, but men do other things to oh, make women romance. happy. Oh, that's oh. so sweet. His wife's listening. <laughs> Kelly? Oh, man. Wait, wait, wait. wait. What? Yeah. You what got two. I'm, there? I'm pressing two. I, oh. All right. You got another call there, Drew? Like it matters which one you pick, right? Hussein? Yeah. You're 16? Yeah. What's going on? Uh, first of all, I just want to say uh, you guys really kick ass. And Thanks. I really like your show. You know, you guys helping people. And Eminem, I have great love for your music. And all me right. and Vallejo's all the way behind you supporting you, man. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, I know you guys might be disappointed, but I totally made up the call just to say uh, Eminem is really tight. Oh, that's actually good, because that's the kind of call we are actually looking for oh. right then. So. That's actually the best call of the night, and I didn't even listen to the rest of the night, but that's the best call. All what right, man, I, I just really want to say it's tight. Um, can I give my address to you um, <laughs> over commercial or something? Because I really want your signature for a new CD. Okay. Sign it. All, All right. right, thanks, man. All right, we'll put you on hold. Somebody All will right, take man. it in a minute. Lisa? Uh, we're going to put uh, line one on hold, and uh, Eminem's going to sign his uh, CD and then uh, send it back to him. Jessica? Yeah. You're 15? Yeah. You want to give your boyfriend a good hand job? Yeah, and I need some tips. You need tips? Yeah. What? And uh, because uh, you've never done this before? No, I'm like new at this. Why are you going to do it for him? Well, because I want to, and because he wants to, obviously. Mm-hmm. Have you discussed it with him? What? <clears throat> Did you have this conversation with him? Sort of. Is he pushing you for more than that, or is that... No. Mm-mm. That's just where he's... Just wants the hand job. Yes. Yo, this girl's oh, only no. 15 years old. Yeah. No. No, no, see, see, I, like, I kind of brought it up a little bit. You brought it up? Yeah. Uh, mm-hmm. the, the hand job? Yeah. Right. Okay. You know, uh... It, it, I don't know what happens. There's a certain like. When's the last time you got a hand job, Drew? Like uh, 1971. Oh, gee, let's let me check my calendar. <laughs> yeah, go check your hand job calendar out. <laughs> That's the bizarre question you ever asked me. Well, no, it isn't. Yeah, you've asked me. Eminem, yeah, when's the last time you got a hand job? <laughs> I last got a hand night. Job. Last night, really? <laughs> yes, no. it was. Really? Do you enjoy hand jobs? Do I? Enjoy- it's cool. It's cool. But don't you think? How old are you? <clears throat> huh? Are you twenty five? Twenty five. Yeah. Have you? Have you? The whole. The whole. Um, I don't know. The whole condom thing doesn't really work for me. Uh, you know what I'm saying? Right. So I just don't use them. So uh, that's a very positive message you're putting <laughs> forth to the kids. Nah, nah, nah. It just. It. 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 it he it just. Uh, he just has me, mutual so. masturbation. Then so, so it goes with know? the hand job. Yeah, right. right. See, my, I didn't say somebody else gave me one. 
my I, oh, I understand. Yeah, right. my I was gonna say because a hand job, someone else at the helm of my uh, penis does not work for me because well. my penis is so used to my own hand that it's like a lock that cannot work with a, another key. Well, it's never. You know really, what I'm saying? Well, it's never really without it. Right. Yeah. I mean, my my. In fact, how would you? How would that other person sort of slip themselves in? Their Think hand would have to be the exact same size as my hand in order to fall into the slots that I've, <laughs> I've worn into my penis over the years. And they'd have to trick your hand out of position. Yeah, my hand yeah. would never no. would never be tricked out of position. I, Jessica? I've never been with a yeah. woman. All right. Uh, here's Here are my hand job tips. Uh, oh, M&M, you uh, jump in if you have anything you want to add. <clears throat> Don't worry about the base uh, so much, the uh, foundation of the Eiffel Tower. Try to stay up around the, um, the, uh, the, you know, the lookout, the observatory at the top there. The mushroom. The restaurant. Right. Stay, go, to, go, go to where the restaurant is, not, the ele- not where the elevator is down at the bottom there, not where, not where you park. All right, so we'll focus on that. Uh, try to get a little rhythm going, meaning uh, try to be consistent. Don't be jumping, at, jumping all over the place. So to keep a little consistency, if you really want to freak them out, just go and spit right on your hand right before you do it, just just to let them know you mean business. And uh, if you like, you could put your thumb in his ass, but that's just an option. And uh, being, don't do that. No, don't do that. You're 15, <laughs> 15 years old. But well, but, well let's hear from him. Let's hear what he has. All right, no, I'm saying don't do that. Period. Not if a girl did that. If the girl did that to me, we'd have problems. The thumb? Yeah, the whole thumb thing. It's not working for me. No, I don't like it either. But you know, some fifteen year old guys <laughs> enjoy nice thumbing. Yeah. And, and get go go in your in your bathroom and get your mother's baby oil. Mothers always had baby oil. All right. Okay. Yeah. Uh, any, any of that Lubriderm or Nivea or any of that stuff will work, too, all right? Okay. Oh, boy. And um, let's see other. Put a lot of perfume on mm-hmm. so um, he can close his eyes and think he's in a whorehouse. And uh, just be consistent, okay. all right? Thank you so much. All right. But, but, you know, just as a disclaimer, if you don't want to do it, don't do it. Oh, no. I'm just telling as long as you do it. And, and don't be so rough with the guy. Okay. Just uh, t- take it easy. Be uh, be soothing. Okay. All right. Okay. There you go. Okay. Well. Okay. Well, this is quite a job I have. Yeah. So I helped another another minion. That's I'm good. Thirty five years old. I sit here and tell uh, fifteen year olds how to uh, jerk off. That is. Uh, and uh, you know, when we get into that material, it's uh, just pleasing. It makes me proud. Let's take ourselves a uh, little break. We'll be right back with the best of the best of the best of Love Line after this. This has been Love Line. Love Line. Opinions expressed on this show are not necessarily those of the staff, or not management, the sponsors, sponsors, or this station. Sponsors or this the, station. The, the producer for Loveline is Annie Gold. Loveline is a presentation of Westwood One Entertainment.